Okay, we have our work cut out for us today. What we have here is a Sharp XM1801 out of a Nintendo Red Tint. And this is going to be used as a spare for the Red Tint that my buddy brought this down for. So I got a friend up in Kansas City who brought me a couple of monitors to work on. A couple of them didn't really need much and uh, didn't require a video. But for this one, uh, this one is missing the yoke. And the reason for that is the original yoke, which is common to every, well, the issue that this has is common to almost every single one of these. Uh, the yoke is burned up. The yoke has charred itself and burned itself and shorted itself and uh, it's just unusable. And almost every one of these at some point in their life will have this happen. Fortunately, the K7000, the uh, skinny neck K7000 yoke is an absolute 100% drop in replacement. So uh, he brought me the entire setup here with the original yoke and a replacement 7000 yoke. So the purpose of this video is we're going to try to get this installed on here and get it adjusted and converged and uh, all set up. And I'm not even sure if the chassis works. Um, we have to slide this on here, uh, adapt it to work, and then see if the chassis or monitor even comes on. But the main issue here is that the original yoke connector is like this, has a proprietary connector, and Wells Gardner has its own proprietary connector. Um, well, this is actually, I say it's less proprietary and more standard, uh, but this is absolutely proprietary to the Sharp setup. So we're going to have to swap these over, probably just uh, desolder the wires off of this yoke and desolder the wires off of this yoke and just swap the entire harness assembly as opposed to trying to cut the wires and splice them. It's going to be uh, better uh, in result. So we're going to have to do that. I'll probably do that off camera. I'll just get these wires swapped over, then we'll come back and try and get this installed on here. We don't have to do the convergence and everything just to see if it turns on. All we need to do is just slide the replacement yoke on, uh, get the rings somewhat where they need to be, get it secured, and that's all we have to do to get this to turn on and see if it even works. If it turns on and operates, then we can go ahead and start with our conversion and all that stuff. So uh, I'm gonna get the wire swapped over, come back and we'll get this installed and see if it turns on and uh, where we're at from that point. All right, so real quick, I got all of the wires swapped over. Uh, this is the original, whoop, the original Wells Gardner connector that was on this yoke is now off. This is the original yoke that's all burned up. And here is the replacement 7000 yoke with the Sanyo wires uh, soldered on. So let's go ahead and verify and make sure everything is hooked up correctly. The uh, back two tabs here closest to the neck is going to be, I'm sorry, well, this is closest to the tube is this way. So on the next side, these two tabs here had the heat shrink on them originally, which they are the horizontal tabs. And the two further away tabs here without the heat shrink that was on them is the vertical. So if we turn the meter on and we test these two tabs here, we should have horizontal somewhere around 2 ohms for 7,000, 2.3, yep. And the other one should be around 11 to 12 or so. Uh, yeah, 13, close enough. So, yeah, I think we're good to go. So we have uh, yellow and green are our vertical and red and blue are horizontal. So that uh, should all be fine. So now we need to get this on the tube and we don't need to worry about where it's positioned, just get it in a nor uh, nominal position, get those uh, rings back on and it's where it used to be, where that assembly used to be, and then just turn it on, see if the chassis actually functions and works, and we can make adjustments from that point. So let's do that. Uh, this might be a bit tricky, so we're gonna have to first take this protective cover off. Okay, just lifts up and out of the way. We'll remove the neck board, take the rings off. Now, these are all still somewhat aligned, so we shouldn't have to make any adjustments on the rings. All we should have to do is find the right spot on the neck where it used to be. And if we look right there, we can see some remnants of where this white paste is. So if I was a betting man, I'd say that it probably needs to go right about there. Because uh, you can see right here is where the, the, well, this used to sit. So the only question is, does it sit like this or does it go in there like this? Now, if I was a betting man, I'd say it needs to go like this. So 
We'll feed this through. Um, now, I will say the reason that these like to burn up a lot is because the header pins get oxidized on the chassis itself. The header pins where this connects get oxidized and generate extra heat, and that's what burns up the coating on and on the the windings here and directly contributes to these flybacks failing. So we're going to have to go through and possibly clean uh, the oxidation off the pins, but that'll be later. If this does work, we get it operational and looking good, then I'll go through and redo the chassis with the solder, reflow solder, uh, change all the caps out, clean the header pins, do all that. Uh, but first, let's just make sure this actually functions. So we're going to feed this through and slide this on here like so. And it looks like it used to sit here, but that's kind of far away. This tube still has the rubber uh, gaskets, the rubber feet. So I guess what we'll do is, um, you know, just for better example of what's going on, let's get rid of this plastic protector. Pop it out here real quick. There we go. And just so we can see what's going on here. And it's holding on to the anode wire. Okay. Set that aside. Okay, so you can see here that it still has the rubber feet. There's one here, there's one. And there's one down here right there. There's one over here. So I guess what we'll do is we'll just start by pushing this up. It's the same exact dimensions and everything as the bad one. So I, we could just simply push this up to right there. And just uh, make sure it's not crooked. Push it all the way up against the rubber feet. And then tighten it up. Not too tight, just snug. Okay, now we can take the convergence rings here and slide them up. And if I was a betting man, I'd say they go right about there. And we can tighten this up. This is going to be a good base for us to start. Just snugs all you need. Plug this on. Now let's make sure to remember to actually plug it in. And that's going to be right. They don't make it easy on these. And they've got it so you can't plug it in backwards. And Got it. Okay. All right. Well, let's get the camera repositioned and see what we can do to get this uh, turned on and tested. And we're not going to worry about, well, maybe I will. Maybe I'll just go ahead and put this back on just for safety's sake for the moment. So, um, all right, let's get this flipped around and hooked up and see uh, if it works and uh, what kind of adjustments we need to make. All right, now these require a 100 volt input as opposed to 110 volt input. So I have my little Nintendo power supply transformer out of a Nintendo cab that I picked up years ago um, as part of a lot of other various parts. So we're feeding at 115 and or 110 and it's being converted to a 100 volt output, which is what uh, is marked here on the board. So we're using this came directly out of a, a Nintendo cabinet and we're going to be using uh, the TPG. We'll turn it on and it's on regular non-inverted colors and this has a inverter switch. So uh, one position is inverted colors, the other position is non-inverted. So I don't know what position is this is in. It's also a good idea to use some contact cleaner because over the years uh, that switch being in that same position will cause uh, oxidation and stuff so I sprayed a bunch of that cleaner in there and pushed it back and forth a bunch of times and put it back where it was so if it's inverted we'll have to take the switch and flip the switch and make sure that's working but 
Otherwise, yeah, um, I think we'll go ahead and just cross our fingers and see if it works. So um, let's see where we're at, give us a good baseline and then make some adjustments from there. So here we go, will it even work? One, two, three. Well, yeah, it comes on. And yeah, it works, fantastic. And uh, it's a little bit gouged up, but okay, uh, it works. Uh, vertical hold, um, we're gonna have to, my mind is blanking, uh, no pun intended, ha ha ha, on how to adjust vertical hold on these guys. Uh, oh, it's on the front, uh, okay, down here. Vertical hold is this guy. And boys and girls, you've got to be joking. There's no, this is converged perfectly. Look at this. This is the first power up, I swear, <laughs> I absolutely swear. This is the first power up after putting that yoke on. And there's no convergence, holy crap. Unbelievable, well we're flipped horizontally, we'll have to fix that. Um, Holy crap! And yeah, we are uh, inverted. See how red is over here? What? Let's flip. No, we're not inverted colors. Yeah, there's inverted colors. Oh, red's over here because I have the screen flipped. I'm a, a, a nincompoop. So I'm going to have to... You can't crack that in half like you can the Wells Gardner one and flip it. So I'm gonna have to desolder the red and blue wires and switch them. Uh, so let me do that real quick and I'll come right back. All right, so I got the uh, red and the blue wire swapped. I went ahead and put some heat shrink on all those because they sh really should have heat shrink on there to keep you from getting zapped if you touch and stuff. So that's now done. So let's see what difference that made. Turn that back on, here we go, one, two, three. Okay, it's uh, not as energetic because it's still charged up. And there we go. Fantastic. We're still a little gauss. I think it has a degauss switch right here if I push it. I think this probably spent a lot, some time in its life sitting on its side. That's why that's like that. The degauss switch doesn't seem to, it does work. But it's not getting rid of that. It could be, what if we rotate this a bit? Mm, not really. I'll take care of that. Um, but if we scroll through here, there is our RGB. But we got, I'm going to do something that you should never, ever, ever do. Never, ever, ever, in any circumstance, ever do what I'm about to do. There you go. Speaker magnet. Quick and easy degauss tool. But you gotta know how to use it. You gotta do it right. But there you go. I don't have a wand here on hand. I do have that speaker though. Never ever do that. <laughs> so look at that, RGB, glorious. Let's go to our convergence page and you have got to be kidding me. I, you, uh, Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Uh, never in a million years will you ever have something that turns out like this ever again. Old yoke, off. A completely different yoke. Rings off, rings back on. And I nailed it. First try, 100%. Now, I have to give credit to the old line there, but I could have had it back a little bit or too far forward. I could have had this too far back or, I mean, first try, absolute perfection. I cannot believe it, but I have to, I'm looking right at it. Well, 
<laughs> it absolutely blows me away. Never in a million years will you ever get that lucky again. <laughs> oh, I know some of you are probably going to be very disappointed because you wanted to see, you know, yoke position and purity and convergence and adjustments, but I, you can't fix it if it's not broken. And I was kind of looking forward to doing that as well, but I, I'm, I'm completely flabbergasted here about how well it's turned out first try. So uh, let me see if I can hook up an actual board here and we'll see what it looks like with an actual game running here. Okay, so I went ahead and hooked up a uh, WWF WrestleFest PCB that I have here of my stack of boards. And I got my little um, interconnect here hooked up for the JAMA wires and then this runs directly to the chassis here. So let's uh, see what it looks like with an actual PCB. One, two, three. Okay, came back on. Of course, we don't hear it because the tube's still energized or it's still, uh, what's the word capacitized <laughs> so uh yeah it's way too bright uh but we can solve that rather quickly with uh just adjusting the screen pot on the flyback here and uh yeah man it works amazing now if i was to flip the inversion switch here you gotta be careful because if you touch this metal heat sink on the hot you'll get the shock of a lifetime so you want to be very careful we'll flip that switch and uh, oh it doesn't work on the inversion here oh it does it we're too dark okay if i turn the flyback back back up there we go yeah so the inversion works a bit different on that circuit so we'll flip it back to non-inverted and see how it's bright again turn it back down and voila nice and sharp absolutely no convergence issues at all i i'm absolutely blown away can you believe it you have to you're looking right at it but uh, I got a little bit more. If I hit the degauss again, will that fix that? Ah, uh, went away. Oh, and we just made it worse again over here. But I think this spent some time in its life sitting on its side. That's what caused this. But um, it'll eventually fix itself. Not worried about that. So can we make adjustments for uh, H center? We'll go... Uh, Roughly, and that's as far as that goes. You can adjust the H hold to shift it over a little bit more. There we go. That'll work. Now, uh, vertical size. None of this matters because it's going to be different when you get it in the actual game you're going to run it in. But um, right about there. And yeah, um, the H size is going to be the width coil right there. And I'm not sure if I want to even bother trying to adjust it with it running. So not going to worry too much about it. I'll make some adjustments and all that all that stuff, but yeah, this needs to be taken back off of here, capped, reflowed, inspected, and everything, but initial testing, it works and looks great. Uh, you know, the purpose of this video was to do the convergence and the swap out, make sure it works and all that, and I just turned out, <laughs> I'm still uh, in shock and awe on how this went. Just a direct swap. I mean, you don't even have, I mean, the corners are good. It's just fantastic. I, I, I'm blown away. Anyway, so that's going to be about it. I was hoping this be a bit longer. I'm going to have to make some adjustments and do some edumacation here, but it turned out fa factory perfect first try out of the gate. So anyway, a little disappointed with that, but that's how it goes. So I'll get this off and cap it, reflow it, inspect it, all that jazz. Uh, there's not going to be any real reason to show any of that because there's nothing that needs repaired. It works just fine. So I'll get all that done and let the owner of this know how it turned out and uh, get it back to him and then we'll move on. Um, if, just as an example here, if we pan over to <laughs> off screen here, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, or 16 or so chassis sitting here. I got three big boxes of chassis in the basement that I had to go through, which I'll do a video on all this stuff here soon. I know I've teased it a couple times in the past, but um, I've got a roughly 70 or so, or 60 or 70 chassis in the queue I gotta get working on, so <laughs> uh, I just don't have time to do them all. I don't have time to do a weekly video or a couple videos a week. I kind of have a off schedule upload because I have a regular nine to five job. I gotta keep the games going at the arcade, 130 machines at the arcade, I gotta keep going. Uh, the pole position monitor exploded. The Geo 7 uh, in the. Do I even. I think I even have the. 
Yeah, so I had the Geo, a Geo 7 in our pole position at the arcade, and I got a report of smoke and a burning smell coming out of it, and they turned the machine off, and sure enough, the flatback in that Geo 7 uh, exploded all of its goo out of it. And that is um, this chassis here. So I'm wait I didn't have any new uh, flybacks on hand, so I had to order some from Peter and wait waiting for those to get here. So uh, and this other one here needs a replacement flyback as well. So just things like that. Um, I'll, you know, I have to maintain 130 machines at the arcade on top of my 9 to 5 job and then try and make videos whenever I have a chance. So I've got like 60 or 70 chassis in the queue. I'll get to them when I can. So I'm sorry about not a regular upload schedule, but I have to get to them when I can. But anyway, yeah, I'm still just blown away on this. Uh, I can't believe it was that easy. So this is going to go in the garbage. I'll let the owner know how this went and get everything rebuilt and done. We'll call it good. And otherwise, I appreciate it. Stay tuned for the repair on these 70 other boards and stuff here. And <laughs> Otherwise, I uh, thank you very much. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll see you next time.